Thanks for tuning in to today's video. My name is Hillary and I am on the product management team for ArcGIS Enterprise. And today I'll be talking about five new features in ArcGIS Enterprise 1061. This will be part one of a two part series, so be sure to check out the second video. Um, but for today, we'll be talking about new features in item management, searching and browsing, mapping and symbology, feature analysis, and some content management enhancements that we've made. So let's go ahead and get started. For ArcGIS Enterprise users, layers, maps, and other data items can be found within the Enterprise Portal. Therefore, it is important to keep content organized and make it easily discoverable for your organization. At 1061, you will notice that there is now an option to assign items as authoritative or deprecated as shown here on the left on this layer of libraries in Minneapolis. The authoritative badge indicates that this layer is recommended for use, and the deprecated badge indicates that the layer is no longer kept up to date or relevant and is discouraged for new work. Filters as well now include these badges, so they're easily searchable. A second enhancement to items in the Enterprise Portal is an item information bar which indicates how much descriptive information an item has. This information bar helps promote quality data by encouraging improvements bit by bit, from adding a summary to a thumbnail to an item description. Here you can see, as I add descriptors, the item information bar increases from low to high. Having complete and accurate metadata for your items helps others understand how they are intended for use. Next up is content categories. Categories help to organize the data in your portal based on themes that are pertinent to your organization. Categories can be completely custom or you can use existing ISO, Inspire, or ArcGIS structures. A few ideas for custom categories could be characteristics, such as field data, real-time, or suitable for analysis, or content, such as oceans, rivers, or lakes. Here I'll create custom categories based on regions. From the content page, I select Setup Organization Categories and start filling out my main categories based on region. For Southern California, I'll add a subcategory of Big Bear. Next, I'll select each of my feature layers and categorize them under Big Bear. I can see five items have been added to that category, and on the item, I can verify that it is included under the Big Bear category. Content categories are a great way to create an organizational-wide structure for your data so that it can be easily searched, identified, and used by other members of your enterprise portal. Next up is the new experience for searching content in the Map Viewer and browsing items in the gallery. The gallery now includes a filter for date modified so that users can quickly locate items that were modified today, yesterday, or even at a custom range. The authoritative and deprecated badges we reviewed earlier have also made their way into the filter options here, and users can choose to explicitly filter, for example, authoritative information only. This will return results for items that are promoted for use by your organization. Remember that you can always assign custom groups to the gallery if you would like to display those specific items here. Filters are also available when you are adding data to a map. Under Add, Search for Layers, you can see I have access to different filters based on the folder the data is in, the category that has been assigned to it, the groups it is shared to, and the status, whether it is authoritative or deprecated. One great new enhancement is the amount of information provided about items directly within this pane. Here I can see the description, terms of use, view count, and create a date without having to navigate back to the item details to view these bits of information. Each of these enhancements provide additional granularity on items when searching for data to add to your maps. Three new tools are now available in ArcGIS Enterprise 1061 under Standard Feature Analysis. If you would like to determine the spatial distribution of a set of features, you can use the new Summarize Center and Dispersion tool. You could also use Find Centroids to identify the geometric center of a multipoint, line, or area feature. Also new at 1061 is Find Point Clusters, an analysis tool that locates clusters of point features based on their spatial distribution. 
This helps you to visualize significant concentrations of points or events. So here we have a point layer containing observations of koalas near Brisbane, Australia. If we go to analysis, analyze patterns, and find point clusters, we're able to specify the minimum number of points to be considered a cluster. Since there have been a lot of observations of koalas, we've chosen a higher number of points, such as 50. So here you can see if I toggle on the layer where we've already found these point clusters, you can see significant areas where there are clusters as opposed to the gray points, which indicate surrounding noise. Each of these tools are now available for use in the Enterprise Portal at 1061. New symbology options are now available to style points and lines. Arrows are available to indicate direction for line features, for example, the flow of a river or a direction of a road. Also new is the Firefly symbology option. Here, I'll take a point layer of sidewalk cafes in New York City and symbolize them using the new Firefly design. This adds a certain dimension and brightness to my layer. I'm also using the new Nova layer from the Living Atlas for added emphasis. You'll see more about the Nova layer in the vector tiles section of this video. Lastly, for styles, the existing predominant category and style size can now compare up to 10 attributes, expanding the amount of data you can compare. For example, the level of education for residents of Los Angeles, as shown here. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check out part two. And for more information, you can always visit our website at esri.com forward slash enterprise. Thanks for watching.